Now to some promising signs out of Asia as the U.S. looks for ways to slow the spread of the coronavirus and avoid the crisis Italy is now facing. South Korea, which saw its first confirmed case the same day as the United States, now appears to be flattening the curve after an initial spike. T.J. Holmes is here with more on how they are doing it. Good morning. Hey, good morning, and this should be encouraging news for all of us to see a country like South Korea seem to be coming out of this thing after two months. Something they're doing is working, so we should be doing that. Well, we aren't. We haven't, and we might not even be capable just yet. As coronavirus spreads across the West, new signs of hope in Asia, and in particular South Korea, where there's been a dramatic turnaround. The number of infections skyrocketed there from dozens to thousands in early March. But now, they're reporting the lowest number of new cases, just 64 in a single day, since their peak weeks ago. And they didn't lock down entire cities. Experts say swift action from the very beginning was key. That included social distancing, contact tracing, widespread testing, and they were prepared. They made sure they had enough ventilators, they had enough uh, personal protective equipment, uh, made sure masks were being produced and mass produced. So all those things, that's the full set of epidemic strategies they implemented very quickly. Both South Korea and the U.S. reported their first case of COVID-19 on the same day, January 20th. But South Korea then did something the U.S. has not, implemented a system to electronically track people and the disease. South Korea used different types of tracking measures to figure out where people were moving, whether they were violating social distancing measures. So, for instance, if they are you know, supposed to be staying at home and instead they're out on the street or using public transportation. They were able to figure that out fairly quickly. Here's an example of how it works. Let's say you find out you have coronavirus. The government then uses your cell phone and credit card data to track where you've been and then blast out an alert to the cell phones of people who may have crossed your path. Our own Juhi Cho showing us what one of those alerts looks like on her phone. Another major difference. Here in the U.S., the N95 mask supply is limited, and the CDC advises people not to wear face masks unless they're sick or caring for someone who's ill. But in South Korea, masks are widespread and encouraged by the government. Monique Claiborne, who is from the U.S. but has lived in South Korea for three years, says she doesn't leave home without one. Masks are actually quite easy to, to get here from any of the convenience stores or any of the drug stores because... People tend to wear them um, due to the air pollution occasionally anyways. So everyone's wearing masks. People have been very, very vigilant with that. And back to this idea of testing, they will tell you guys, doctors, that testing is key. Here they're telling us not everybody needs to run out and get a test. In South Korea, widespread testing, because what does that tell you? Where your problem areas are and how to target them. We're essentially in a case where we're a boxer in a ring with a blindfold on. You can throw everything you want at it, but you can't see your target. And that's our problem right now. We're behind in our testing. It seemed like they had the opposite reaction to how we reacted to it. They were ready to roll, and they put those, they got those tests rolling immediately. They saw their problem areas targeted them. They knew where to send their masks and their ventilators and everything. Mm. So that, we're a little behind that. A little and behind. it worked. Thank you.